Hi, this is Alan with Alan's Firearms and Guns Plus More. And today is the Kimber Crimson Trace Carry. They call it the Crimson Carry. Pretty gun, isn't it? It's duo tone. It has a Crimson Trace laser built into the grip. What's nice about this laser, it has an on and off switch. So you can turn it off when you're just shooting at the range and you don't want to use up your battery. Or you can turn it on by throwing this little switch and now what happens is you can see the laser on my hand. When you grab the gun, the laser goes on. When you let go of the gun, it goes off. On, off. Now, one of the nice things about this, because of the laser being on the side of the grip, if you don't want to telegraph the laser, you can lift your finger up where you normally keep it off of the trigger until you're ready to use it. And then when you're ready to use it, you just put your finger on the trigger and there's your laser. It's because it will be on. Nice things about the gun. The grips are very comfortable. They're crimson grips. It has um, a skeletonized hammer and trigger. It has a standard mag release like all 1911s and the mag drops out cleanly and freely. Um, it does have a bit of a wrap around on the front, but it's not a big deal to have a laser on the gun to have that piece there. I don't see the necessity for a laser on a handgun, but some people love them and it's another sale, sales point. It is duotone. Um, it has a nice big beaver tail, and which is really nice because the gun, no matter how much, no, how high you hold up on the gun, you're not going to get slide bite. Let's get to the workbench. We'll field strip it, clean it, lube it, and put it back together again. Here we're at the workbench with the Kimber Crimson Carry 2. Uh, this is how it's packaged, less that white label. That's my store label. Nice standard box that a lot of guns come in. You open it up, and the Kimber you'll find in a plastic Kimber bag. There is nothing behind Curtain number one, mag, second mag is in the gun, and behind curtain number two, we have here all of the Kimber paperwork, the manual, um, the junior NRA stuff, all the crap that they put in these things, a lock, a little lubricant, your tools for, that's the Kimber tool for dismantling, and these are to adjust your Crimson Trace laser and to clean it. So the only thing we need out of the box to do this is the tool and the gun. So we're going to put this away. Up close you can see the Crimson Trace laser is right here. Here is your on and off switch for the laser. And here is your mag release and the mag pops right out. This is the pressure switch in the front of the gun that turns on and off your Crimson Trace laser. As you can see, it is on right now. If I turn the switch off and I push that button, nothing happens. Okay, so how do we field strip a Kimber? Just make sure the gun is safe. To do that, we remove the, we remove the magazine. We cycle the gun three times. On the third time, we look down the chamber, and we look down the mag well. Now that we know it is safe, okay, let's take a look at the sights. As you can see on, on the Kimber sighting system, they're, they're, it's all black. So as far as I'm concerned, it makes it a little on the tough side to line it up there. It's lined up now, but the sight picture, it's all black. And against a black dot or a black target, I find that difficult. So if I was to own this gun, I'd probably either put white dots on these sights or I'd switch out the sights. Just my opinion. By the way, while I have it in close, here is the laser emitter. This is the laser pre pressure switch. And here is the little on off switch that you can push down, up or down to turn on or off the lasers. If you were to buy these separately for your 1911, they're about, with the switch, they're around 250 to 275 
Without the on off switch, they make a little less uh, expensive model. It's maybe $40, $50 cheaper. So to take it apart, we either pull the slide back, pushing the slide stop up like that. If you're weak handed, you can put a magazine in, pull it back and dump the mag. Now on this firearm, what you're going to find is on the guide rail, or the guide rod, there is a little hole in there. And this Kimber tool, you put it right in that hole, just like that. You can see how it's laying in there. Now what that does is when you release the slide, it takes the pressure off of the spring. So you can line up your, sl your slide stop with this crescent. So I'm going to zoom in on that for a second. So, what it so you're going to line it up with the little crescent notch in there. So here's the crescent right there. So you're going to move that crescent right over the back of your slide stop. And from the other side, you can push it up a little bit and then pull it out. See, it's where you'd push it up. That's where you'd push it up from that little hole. And you take it out and that now releases the slide and it comes off. Now what you want to do at this point is just pull your spring mechanism out and you have it right there. Now I would leave this like that because this is a bear to take apart. I just pour some cleaning solution in there and dump it out because it's, and then put some lube on there. But I leave it just the way it is because it's a bear to get this on and off. I'm not gonna bother. This, the barrel, just flip this little cam forward and it slides right out the front. And there we have it, disassembled. So, I'm gonna use strike hold to clean this. You guys who've watched me know what I'm going to say next. If you want to know more about Strike Hold, go to my video library, my channel, and you can see a full video on it. It is a, an excellent cleaner, and once you clean your gun with this, you don't have to lubricate it afterwards, but I will show you the lubricating process. So I'm going to move these parts out of the way for a second, so you can see what I'm doing better. And you can see this gun has a fair amount of dirt on it, and I'm just going to wipe it down. Now this is a new gun, so I'm taking it that this dirt has, it's from the factory and the test fire. So I'm going to wipe down all the flat parts so that it's easy for my hand to get to. Okay, you can see, look at that, that's pretty dirty for a new gun. A lot of these guns have been coming in like this. Put some more strike hold on a cloth, I'm going to wrap it around a, a wooden stick. Wood is good, it doesn't mar the metal, it's too soft, but it gets into these little crevices and small areas. And I'm going to go up and down the, the, the slot in the front, in the, go up and down the slots on, that are part of the rail system. That's where you get a lot of metal on metal contact. You get in all these small areas that I couldn't get to with my hand. Now. On a 1911, what's integral into this firearm is the feed ramp. Part of the ramp is part of the frame. So I'm going to make sure I spend a little extra time getting that ramp clean so I don't have any fouling and jams. Okay, so that's nice and clean. I'm going to take a rag and wipe down the outside of the gun. Take a push rod with a eyelid on it, and this way I can get down. This is a single stack magazine, like most 1911s. I can get into here and clean the insides out. So I use it like a little mop and get in the front, give it a few twists up here. Frame is done. Let's put that aside and get to the slide. 
I'm gonna take this Rykel rag, wipe it down with my hands. The easy parts that you can easily get with your hand you do. I'm gonna put it on my wooden stick. The slots on each side that the frame rail goes into, I'm gonna make sure I get them nice and clean, both sides. And you do this as many times as you have to to get a clean rag out of there. I'm going to just do it a couple of times just to show you what I'm doing. Okay. Now I'm going to get the slots down in here. I'm going to push up and down on the firing pin block, get that clean. Firing pin block is this little piece right there. Now, very important place to get clean. Inside the slide are some slots that are cut. What they do is they match up with the slots that are on top of the barrel. Those are your locking lugs. You want to make sure that those locking lugs are clean so the barrel locks securely and tightly. So I'm putting my stick down in there with some strike hold on a cloth and I'm getting those clean top inside and out, top and bottom, however you want to say it. Okay, and the whole inside of the slide. And that got a fair amount of dirt out of there. So I have a clean part of this, so I'm just going to wipe it off the outside with the gun, give it a coating of strike hold because it, it works as a protectant. Inside the barrel hole and the hole for the guide rod and that's clean put that aside now the barrel what I like to do on the barrel is put my finger over in this case the front because it's the back is irregular spray some strike hold in there shake it up a bit let it pour out onto a rag then I will take a cloth and I'll put it either on a push stick or something like this and push it through, pull it out, push it through. Make sure I get my barrel nice and clean. Now, what I'm definitely going to do is I'm going to take some more strike hold, put it on a cloth, wrap it around this piece, which I like to use for this. I like to make sure I get the chamber nice and clean so I don't have to worry about a round getting stuck. Remember, the brass expands when you fire it and then it comes back to its normal size. Well, if there's too much dirt in there, it's going to capture the brass and you're going to get a possible jam. So you want to make sure that's clean. Get the outside of the barrel, the locking, the, the uh, slide lock cam and the top of those locking lugs. So you want to make sure the top of the, the locking lugs on the barrel, just like you did in the frame, you're going to make sure those are clean. And then you're going to pay some attention to the feed ramp in the barrel, top and bottom. Make sure that's perfectly clean. The reason I say particular attention, because these are areas that if you don't make sure they're clean, those are the areas that if they get too dirty will definitely cause fouling and a jam. Okay, so that is the barrel. We take the pin, the slide lock pin, clean that off. And one other thing on the slide, I, I forgot to say, because I'm doing a video. I'm going to take this and I'm going to make sure I get the battery of the slide really clean. These sticks are great for that because you can put a lot of downward pressure on them and clean it really well. 
And then I'm going to take a clean cloth with strike hold, fold it, and get it underneath the extractor. Because if the extractor is dirty, it can ride up over the round and end up, and you'll end up jammed. Okay, so there. Now let's go to the guide rail. rail. We'll clean that off. We'll clean off the spring. I'm going to spray a little strike hold in there. I'm going to dump it out. Okay. I'm not taking this apart. You want to try, you can, but this spring is a bear to get back on there, and I'd rather just stay like that. I'm going to clean off the magazine, the follower, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my stick and push down the follower and let it just come up nice and gently underneath each of the... You see that took off a lot of dirt that got underneath the... Uh, Feeding, the feeding fingers. These are feeding fingers. They're integral to the operation of the gun. If they're not clean or they bend, they can cause you an issue. So that is another reason why you don't slam a magazine into a 1911. That's only done in the movies. Now let's oil this and lube it. How do you oil it and lube it? Well, first of all, you don't put oil directly on the gun. You're going to take your oil and put one, two, three drops of oil on a cloth. Let it permeate the cloth. Take your cleaning stick. Remember, putting oil directly in a gun just gives areas for dirt to build up because it attracts dirt. Run it once, twice, three times back and forth in your slot. Once, twice, three times. Okay, make it four. One more on each. Now I'm going to take the, if, if I'm not using a strike hole product, you're going to want to take the cloth and just wipe down the inside of the gun to give it a little coating, very, very minor coating of oil to protect it from moisture. Too much oil isn't going to help wipe down your battery, the inside of the barrel hole, and the, uh, okay. Wipe down your barrel. Push your oily cloth through the barrel, inside of the barrel, just to give it a coating for protectant. Wipe down your guide rod. I'm going to take my oily cloth and go a couple of times on the rails on the frame. And this is an aluminum frame, so I don't have to worry about rust and protecting areas from rust. I'm going to wipe down the hammer. And that's it. Voila! Time to put the gun back together again. Put the slide down, take the barrel, you're going to push this forward so it slides into the front of the gun. It will fall into its locking position. That comes back. This goes in through here. You saw what I just did there? I just moved this up. Okay, so now I'm just going to match up my slots to my slide rails. Slide this on. Just like that. Okay, and now I can line up I can line up that crescent. So I line up that little crescent hole right there with the slot here. I take my, my pin and what I do is I look through this hole and I move the barrel to line up that hole. So if I put this in there, you see how the barrel can't move? And I stick this in just like that. And you can see it will fall right in. I'll move this over here. And what I want to do is with a device, like a screwdriver or something, 
you want the flat of it, you want to push that pin forward. I'm going to use this piece of wood. Got to keep everything lined up. And you want to push that pin in. Otherwise, what's going to happen is you're going to get what we call on here an idiot mark and then press it down. An idiot mark is a scratch on your gun. So you want to be able to push this up without pushing it down. Once it's in front of that pin, then you can push it in and you're good. Now I move back the slide, lock it into place, take my uh, Kimber tool out, check for function. Okay, fires, do not press your rear safety, does not fire. Check regular safety, hold it down, hold that back down your uh, beaver tail safety. Does not fire, it's in safe mode, take it off, fire it, fires. Function check on slide. It works. Please note, a lot of times when you have an empty magazine in there, it'll the, the pressure of the spring is too much to release it with the magazine. Drop the magazine, you'll find, just like I did, it will fire easily. It will release easily. And it fires. Okay, so there we have it. Thanks for joining me for the Kimber 1911. So until next time, Alan from Alan's Firearms saying thank you and please like and subscribe.